7 returns. America's number one adventurer, K-7, former United States secret agent, who operated in 22 countries, on land, on sea, and in the air, brings you a story of today. Here is K-7. With huge defensive rearmament programs getting into stride, shipyards have assumed a new importance in all of the great nations. Keels are being laid almost daily, and several great floating fortresses are under construction. This activity has attracted many foreign spies. They seek information about the new ships and particularly pictures of the shipyards and their location. This latter information would be of the utmost importance to bombing planes seeking to destroy the shipyards in the event of war. Such is the background of the story which John Holbrook introduces. Thank you, K-7. Our story begins near a great shipyard. It is near midnight as a small group of men work in darkness around an anti-aircraft sound detector, which has four great horn-like ears pointed toward the sky. Nothing approaching from the north. No sound from north. Needle at zero. No sound from east. Needle zero. No sound east. It's after 12 o'clock, General Tivage. Begins to look as if he want to have a visit tonight. Well, the plane has flown over as late as 2 a.m., Agent B-9. We'll just have to wait. This mysterious plane... How many nights have you heard it overhead? Uh, three. Although, of course, it may have gone over undetected before. Mm. Sentries might have mistaken it for a commercial plane off its regular route. Wait, General. The sound detector has picked up something. Direction south, southeast. Direction south, southeast. They have picked the plane up, Agent B-9. Crew, stand by searchlights. Your glass is ready for use, B-9. I'm ready. Searchlights on. Circling to the west to turn back. They've seen our lights. It'll be out of sight in another minute. Did you get a look at him? Only briefly. It's a fast monoplane, General. It looks almost like a pursuit ship. Ah, he's almost away. I think I have a plan. That's all that we can do here tonight, General. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> morning, Agent B-9 and his assistant, Rita Drake, drove to General Tiviage's headquarters. On the way, B-9 outlined the case. A plane has flown over the shipyard for three nights in succession, Rita. I've checked all flying fields within a thousand miles. There's no record of any such plane having taken off. Then well, where does it come from, B-9? Probably from a secret field somewhere along the coast. I've discounted it's coming from the deck of a ship at sea. The Coast Guard hasn't been able to locate a mothership. And from the little I could see of the plane when it flew over last night, I'm sure it's a land plane. So we'll stop here. Have you any idea why the flights are made? They wouldn't dare drop bombs. No, Reaper. The flights are made to map the exact location of the shipyard, and the ship's now under construction. You'll get the rest of the story in the general's office. Uh, here, we'll use this entrance. Whom do you wish to see, sir? General Tiviage. Agent B-9 calling. Yes, sir. This way, sir. Special Agent B-9 calling, sir. Oh, come in, B-9. Uh, this is your assistant, Miss Dray. That's right. Rita, this is General Tilliard. I'm glad to know you, sir. Uh, the pleasure is mine, Miss Drake. 
Uh, your father is in the service. I know him well. Uh, sit down. Thank you. Now, B-9, have you had time to form any opinions? My inquiry is already underway, General. I'm convinced the plane is a land plane, a foreign lake. I believe the flights over the shipyard are for the purpose of taking pictures. Pictures? Yes. If I'm right, they are using expensive cameras with infrared film. The science of night photography has progressed far enough to ensure fair results. I see. B-9, I think you're on the right trail. What's your next move? Most of the infrared films manufactured today are made in this country, General. I've talked with most of the film companies by long distance this morning. A telegram will be delivered to me here within the next few minutes. You want the names of those who have purchased films? That would be too much to hope for. I'll be satisfied to learn that such films have been sold to a dealer in a city south or southeast of this point. I see. But the information should uh, come in. A telegram has just arrived for Special Agent B-9 in care of you, sir. Oh, uh, let me have it at once. Thank you. Yes, this is the information I want. Infrared film sold only to our dealer in Osborne, in your part of country. Has placed several orders. Should have supply on hand. General, Osborne is southeast of this point, isn't it? Yes, it's a small city about um, 150 miles away from by air. Then I'm starting for there at once by car. Rita, I want you to remain here until 11 o'clock tonight. Yes, b And General, at 11 tonight, I want a plane and a skilled pilot assigned to Miss Drake. The plane is to be equipped with landing flares. I'll arrange it at once. Uh, what is your plan? I'd rather not discuss it until I've thought out the details carefully, General. Rita, we'll leave now. You and I have a lot of work to do. And, General, if we're lucky, we'll have your spy by tomorrow morning. Rita and B-9 spent the next hour over maps of the countryside and making their plans. Then B-9 left for the small city, which was to be the center of their activity. At 11 that night, Rita and her pilot took off and also headed into the southeast. An hour later, her plane circled the city of Osborne at a high altitude. This is about the right altitude, pilot. It's clear night, too. We should see B-9 signal easily. Have you any idea which side of the city the field is on? No. I haven't heard from B-9. He was going to talk to the photographic dealer and then question those who lived in outlying sections. If he locates the field, he'll signal to us by a flashlight from the ground. That looks like a level field below. The plane could land or take off from there. Uh, use your glasses. I am. Pilot, those flashes, did you see them? Yes. Oh, it's B-9. Read the flashes. He's signaling. Dash, two dots. That's D. Dot, dash, dot. That's R. Dash, dot, O. Dot, two dashes, dot, T. It's the word drop. Uh, two dots, dash, dot, F. Dot, dash, two dot, L. Drop players. It's the signal. We're right over the field. Release them. Keep circling. There's the player. Uh, there's a plane on the field. See it below us? I don't see anyone. Keep circling and come into the wind so that we can land if necessary. On the ground, two men were preparing to take off as Rita's plane appeared overhead. When the flares were dropped, one of them issued a sharp order. A flare. Get under the wings so he won't be seen. Someone looking for a landing field. Yeah, for us. Keep out of sight until the flare dies out. Then we'll take off. This plane is faster than any in this part of the country. Yes, sir. What are you looking at? A man. He was standing up at the edge of the field looking this way. You are sure? I saw him plainly for a minute. Mm, the flare is dying. Come on. Keep down now. Yes. What are you going to do? I'm going after him. Keep down. The glass is quite high. Do you see him? Mm, I think so. Yes. Yes, it's a man. Have your gun ready for use. All right. Put up your hands. Turn around. And let me look at you. Take your flashlight out of my eyes. Oh, be nine. Well, so we meet again. Get his gun for us. All right. I've got it. Who are you? Trouser. Yes, B-9. I'm Lavelle Trevza. The last time we met, you sent me to prison. It'll be different this time. Turn around and walk to the plane. What do you think you're going to do, Trevza? We'll talk about that later. 
You're going with us. Start the motors. We've got to take off before the other plane lands. Above them, Rita's plane still circled. Then Rita saw the flashlight moving. There's something going on down there. Drop another flare. Maybe we'll be able to see it. Hey, keep watch. Here goes. It will burst in a minute. Hey, there it goes. Look, three men walking across the field. One of them has his hands over his head. It's B-9. Hey, they're getting into the plane. Swing into the wind. We're landing. Hold on. The field may be rough. Hurry, the plane's turning around. They're going to take off. No, no, they're not. Hang on, Miss Drake. I'm going to land and crash them. Here we go. Are you all right, Miss Drake? I think so. Rita. Oh, B-9, where are they? Both of them are knocked out, Rita. I don't know how badly they're injured. They tried to jump just as you hit us. Are you all right? Yes, B-9, were they the spies? Yes, Rita. One of them was Lavelle Travzer, an old enemy of mine. He's one of the most ruthless spies in the world. If you hadn't arrived in time, he would have killed me. The master spy, Lavelle Traveser, died on the way to the hospital. If he hadn't attempted to jump, he would have probably have been safe. Lavelle Trabser was one of the most dangerous of the international espionage agents, a man whose very existence was a menace to peace. Listen for my next story. This is K-7 speaking.